Hi guys, Ryu here with Naritude for Blender. Let's talk about depth of field. Let's see why your images are blurry. If you have a camera selected in Blender and you click on it, you can access depth of field. And that will enter a depth of field mode, right? Now you got few options in here. Some of them are important, especially focus on object, focus distance, f-stop and blades. Now before we start, let me tell you what is f-stop. F-stop is an aperture determines the, the, the size of the iris in the lens, the opening, the size of the opening of the lens. So you have bl blades in the lens. That's why we're going to talk about blades later, okay? And the blades are opening and closing. Now, large f-stop is counterintuitive. So check this out. Large f-stop means small aperture and a lot in focus. Small f-stop, like here at 1.2, means wide aperture and very little in focus so 16 you want to use for landscape 1.2 or 1.4 you want to use for portraits or products that's how you get this blur effect okay so now if i'm gonna set my aperture to 1.2 which is insanely small i mean there are lenses in the real world that can go below one but not many of them they're just like really rare 1.2 there's one lens from canon it's a it's a portrait lens 1.2 it's an old lens too now usually lenses are from like 1.4 up and that's already a very shallow depth of field 1.2 if i shot a portrait with 85 millimeter lens with 1.2 aperture i would have probably five millimeter in focus I'm literally half a centimeter that's how crazy that aperture is. So now, if I'm going to click on this cube, right? Do you think it's going to be sharp? Hell no, it's going to be blurry. Why? Because Blender focuses on the origin point, right? So it focuses in here. That's where it focuses. And to understand why the cube is blurry, we need to also talk about plane of focus, okay? So let's grab another cube. Let's move it in here. Rotate it. Okay. And scale it on Y. Now, this would be an equivalent, maybe, of 1.2 uh, aperture. You're capturing this area across the cube when you're shooting this way. Why? Because plane of focus, right, follows the camera front of the lens. So the front of the lens let's grab a cylinder now if you look at the cylinder and you look you know you look inside right here that's the that's the front of the lens so the front of the lens will determine how the plane of focus runs it needs to be a uh, plane of focus right will be parallel to uh, to the lens so if a lens is facing is flat this way that's how the plane of focus is gonna run so that's why my camera is facing this way my plane of focus run this way so my plane of focus is gonna follow the camera so if you rotate the camera and angle it and you shoot something and you slice it with a plane of focus and this plane of focus is not deep enough to encompass the whole object the front of it is gonna be blurry furthermore if I'm focusing on the cursor, which is basically the center of the object, that's where my camera is focusing right now. So if I select the cube, my camera will focus on this cursor in the middle of the cube, right? This is my plane of focus. Now let's put our plane of focus exactly in, in a way that this line is going to go across it. Now if I'm going to focus on this cursor, whatever depth of field I have, right? So whatever my, my depth of field is, right? This area of focus. One third of it in front and two third of it behind the point of focus will be sharp, but there is a fall off. So it's going to be coming less and less sharp. That's a peak of focus. So you could use it to your advantage by simply placing your focus slightly deeper behind the element that you want to have sharp. And then you can extend the focus area before and behind point of focus. You follow? But if this plane is too small, too narrow, you will never be able to get this 
front bit sharp. So now to combat this, right? Let's hide it. To combat this, right? What you need to do is simply either do it manually. Let's apply these uh, modifiers because they annoy me. I want to get the grab an edge. So to combat this, what you need to do is grab an edge, right? Bring a cursor to uh, to select it, right? And then bring the um, origin to to the cursor. And now check this out. If I'm gonna actually, um, you know, reselect this cube, see where the focus is now. It's exactly on this edge. But look what happens, right? When I reset this origin point to geometry, I'm gonna reset it to geometry, right? Boom, blurry. Because the foc focal point now moved inside of the cube, so moved in here, right? And that's the problem. So now, if I'm going to increase my depth of field, right, I'm gonna start getting more and more things in focus, you see? Look. Because the focus, the depth of focus, the depth of field is increasing, expanding back and forth. So that's how focus works. So you can either do it manually, which is probably the best way of focusing in Blender, because you can, you know, you can turn it off, right? And zoom in really, I mean, really close. And if you're clipping, so if your view starts clipping, simply increase this here, the clip start. You can just get, you know, s literally in the face of this edge and, and manually adjust your focus to make it, you know, razor sharp, yeah? I mean razor sharp, this is razor sharp now. But you see how shallow this depth of field is, if I'm gonna go to 1.2, right? Look at this, this already is fuzzy. I mean look, if I'm gonna decrease it, right? See, it's getting fuzzy. So you gotta be really careful with it. Especially when you take um, renders, you know, when you render stuff at the angle. There's another thing that's important, and that's blades. So blades are like curtains inside of the lens imagine a circle that's been cut into pieces and they form uh, they're sort of in the shape of blades and they close and open like an iris okay like a robotic eye and when the aperture is very high so the f-stop is high like 16 the the opening is going to be tiny when the aperture is small the, the lens is going to open. Now, the amount of blades will determine the quality of the blur, which is called bokeh, from the Japanese word bokeh, which means to be out of focus. And don't let me catch you saying bokeh, because we're not animali, okay? So the amount of blades will determine how fuzzy and soft and round those balls of lights are, because, you know, well, usually... Um, Bokeh is visible when you shoot something um, during the daytime when the sun is reflecting on the water, on leaves, on something you know sparkly, or during the night when you shoot lights, and you and you fuzz the lights out, you blur them out, and they just become balls of lights, right? So the rounder the lights are, the more milky the background is, the more expensive the lens is, and expensive lenses have a lot of blades, eleven plus. It starts at eleven. Like pro lenses have about eleven eleven blades. You know, I'm talking about prime lenses, right? Which means they're not zoom lenses. They just have one focal lens is set. There's one more thing that you need to know about depth of field, okay? And that's really important. Let's grab this cube. And this cube, uh, actually, cube is enough. Let's go to local mode. Now, if I place this cube in here, right? And that's my subject. That's going to be my camera, okay? And this is gonna be my background, right? Whoops. This is gonna be my background, okay? So let's move it in here and rotate it. And let's make it larger. There is a connection between the distance of the camera to the subject, the subject or the focal point to the background, the depth of field and the focal length of the lens. Now, lens at 200 mil will compress things, will make things appear more compressed. Okay, you just squish them in. Like when you see those pictures of uh, streets, 
with all those neons and stuff, and they're like really close to one another. That's the compression effect of a long focal length lens, okay? Now, the larger the focal length and the closer you are with this lens to the subject, and the, the lower, so the wider the aperture is, the, the smaller the f-stop, and the further the background is from the subject or from the focal point, which, which is a subject, the more blurry you're going to get in the background. So, for instance, if I move this camera, right, away from my subject, my, my background will be becoming more and more sharp. And the reason for it is exactly as I told you before, that the camera will focus, right, in this line, but the focus, the, the sharpness will, will be falling off one third this way and two thirds this way. So the further you're going to move away from the subject, the more the more gonna the more you're gonna capture here in focus so the less blurry it's gonna become and reversely if you're gonna get really close this shit's gonna be really out of focus right and especially if it's you know if this is really really far and that's how for example in practice right i can show you a practical example is um is my render this this is this is a perfect example these buildings in the back are really 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 far you got this compression effect of 130 something lens and buildings being like really far away and the camera is quite close to this to this ship and that's how this effect is the compression effect and the blur is created okay so you can use it to your advantage i can show you i mean how how it what i'm talking about i can actually show you this so check this out i'm gonna open this blend file right okay so this is the blend file right we can see it's exactly the same right it's the same image now let me go to look tough because it's gonna be easier to see and I'm going to turn off this uh, this junk here to go easy on volumetrics now check this out I'm not gonna change anything except for the uh, the focal length of the camera okay so I'm gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna switch from 200 and I'm gonna I'm gonna start zooming out okay look how sharp those buildings are you can actually see the shapes now right if I increase it to 400 and I zoom out, look, it's just a fuzz, it's just a blur. And let me show you how far, yeah, how far my camera is uh, and, that play, and this ship is from the actual buildings. So my camera was originally at 138. This, this render you see in an art station, it was shot at 138. So if I go back to my camera, right, and I zoom in, that's how it was shot, more or less, okay? Right? It's the same thing. So, now let's leave the camera thing, and I mean the, the view, and look how far the buildings are. This is a camera, this is a ship, and these are the buildings. So you see, like, when my focal point was becoming uh, smaller, these buildings were becoming more sharp. So, there is a, there is a, let's make another experiment, let's move these buildings closer. All right, let's move them on Z closer here, okay? Now check this out. I'm gonna go to my camera and they're much more sharp, you see? Look, I'm gonna go, go Control Z and move them back. Boom, see? They're much more blurry now. The only thing I did was I changed the distance of the buildings from the, from the subject. The distance between the end of area that's you know where things are in focus and the background simply increase so they're more blurry it's just pu pure physics yeah so these are the most important things you should know about focal length and depth of field when you work with renders so now you can use it to your advantage to create some really awesome stuff just play with it experiment and see what's gonna happen but uh, as long as you understand how it works you can use this to your really you know to your, to your advantage in your renders thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed the vid Drop me a like and subscribe if you did. I really appreciate it. Helps the channel a lot. Drop us some comments. Let me know what you think. Maybe you have some ideas for new videos uh, or some questions, problems with Blender or rendering or whatever. Um, and we can see what, what I can do. And I'll see what I can do. Anyway, take it easy and I'll talk to you in the next one.